Fuck DJ Mule. All my homies hate DJ Mule. That's how I'm starting this segment. You can't stop me. So, uh, I wouldn't dream of it. So here's what's happened. Uh, if you missed the last segment, we talked about the horrific abuse of a streamer by the name of Amaranth. Amaranth is a very beautiful woman, uh, very beautiful and such a talent. She uh, is the uh, a very, very popular streamer who does hot top streams as well as has an OnlyFans. And we covered in the last segment uh, the recent discovery of her husband being a giant abusive douche nozzle. So we're not going to go into this specifics of that again because it feels like it's not that kind of segment we wanted to do these separately because it's unfair to bring these this up in regards to the segment involving a woman being abused so we wanted to talk specifically about that and talk about the way those control systems work this is a very different segment dj mule decided to get on twitter and make a analogy between the situation involving Amaranth and his video against Xander Hall, the one that was critically panned by everyone on the online left except for tankies and tanky adjacent people. Yes, I hope that in the uh, YouTube segment that those tweets get shown because holy mother forking shirt balls. Yes, uh, Shalibity, uh, remind me of this after the segment, but I will say, I'll ask Shalibity. But Shalibity, if you see this, please, yeah, put them up. Um, here's the thing. So uh, DJ decided to go through and make these connections between the Xander Hall situation. Now, for those who didn't see that video, uh, Xander Hall is a streamer formerly known as Pig Puncher. I know that's his dead name, but move on. And <laughs> the reality is, is that Xander Hall, well, I've had, you know, I've had some disagreements with Xander Hall in the past. Um, Xander Hall has been a person that Ren and and Mom and and the uh, and Sam have all at least respected to one degree or another. Um, Zan just recently got out of an abusive relationship with a lovely lady by the name of Lonnie, quite possibly over her addiction to methamphetamines. She engaged in much, much in the same, you know, much in the regards of uh, abuses, things that you do, you don't do to partner. She, she allegedly did those and Zan came with receipts. DJ Mule tried to frame this as being an issue of um, Zan kicking his poor girlfriend out and not having makeup sex with her. Oh, and kidnapping her cat because he didn't want the cat to starve and die in an overheated, disgusting apartment. Don't forget that. Uh, Mordecai, uh, a, a tanky, is referring to people who claim to be on the left, but really what they are are red fascists. They are individuals who sh uh, have the aesthetic of communism or socialism or leftism, but they are authoritarians. Yeah. Uh, um, they got their name because of the tanks that rolled into various um, sort of satellite Soviet eras when you know they tried to resist the um ussr and the tanks came in and squashed these um revolts yup so uh we have a tanky uh emote in chat by the way you'll see it right there you guys should be blasting that emote you gotta get better at this guys um so here's the thing um where to begin so DJ Mule is a douche nozzle and a person who not only engaged in abuse apologia, but just generally falls into the trend of essayists who are really mad that they don't make more money on YouTube. That's the only thing I can really come to, because the reality is, is that there seems to be this 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 onslaught of essayists who are really mad about streamers and specifically about quote unquote debate bros, except for. When they say debate bros, they're usually talking about probably four people. They're talking about Destiny, who's not on the left and basically at this point Nazi adjacent. Not to mention quite possibly guilty of many, many things that I won't allege here. Vosh, who does segments beyond just debate, in fact, does the whole like uh, 
like commentary stuff, does many of a critique. Like this is not the whole of the man's work. Xander also, Hall, who also does drama stuff and doesn't necessarily do all debates either. And then Demon Mama, who's not a bro. And, and Hassan. Uh, but Hassan's not a deba- doesn't do debates. Yes, but he still comes up in these discussions. Yes, because they're because they're dumb. Reason. I don't want to give it time of day. He's Hassan. Yeah. He doesn't do debates. He's just a big guy who was wrong about Ukraine and is attractive. That's it. That's the the two things I remember. Yeah. Also, um, there are a number of clips of Vosh that have been going around from many years ago that look very damning. And a lot of them were deceptively clipped by somebody named I Hypocrite, who was so butthurt that he lost to Vosh in the debate that he clipped a whole bunch of segments to make it look like Vosh supported child pornography, that he was anti-trans and, you know, these got picked up. And so that's why you will hear people say that Vosh is a sex pest and a pedophile and et cetera. Despite harassing one person and he apologized to that person and he was punished for that. Eventually. Well, eventually, but again, th- she's done some shit too. But again, oh. to to be clear, like he was punished for that. He's never done it again since. Like again, I'm not saying he sh- that it was okay to do that. It wasn't, and he paid for it. But the problem is, is that when we look at these situations, the issue we get into, and, and this is just my take, is that the term debate bro is meaningless. It has the same feeling as bread tube. I don't know what we're talking about. Because BreadTube feels like anyone that's sort of left and does essays and uses bisexual lighting. Except I've been told we're BreadTube. And I don't know if I want to be in BreadTube. No one asked me. There was no form. Nobody Uh, asked anybody to be in BreadTube. People just decided that folks were BreadTube. If there was a form, I would have known about it. I don't know. Because you don't want to to fill it out because I can't be arsed. I mean, if anything, I'd always, I feel closer to, like, what people call debate bros than anything. Well, like, the, we're the, not that the, different from, like, what Vosh does as far as content. Well, the the other thing that, that folks, um, the anti-debate bro crowd will do will then um, couch the debate audiences in particular lights. Yep. And mm-hmm. sort of overstate the harm that comes out and there also is a um kind of a perception that kind of has been perpetuated ad infinitum that the folks who are in the debate bro audience are like all edgy white ex-white supremacist boys who haven't really left their white supremacy they just learned how to couch it which is funny because a lot of folks who make this claim i don't think they've actually looked at the analytics of any of these channels no nope. isn't it like mm-hmm. a meme in vosh's chat the number of people who start watching him thinking they're like a cis edgy boy and then come out as trans no, like, it's like it's like it's meme? it's like a meme. It's literally a meme of how many trans people there are in his audience. Like oh, what happens a lot. And I'm going to yeah. be I'm going to be really clear. I was in his audience before I started this channel and was dealing with depression. Xena was sick a lot. When I got the idea to do this, it was because of watching streamers, specifically Vosh, because he was the only re- reason I was survi- I survived 2020. Well, and I was watching all of that with Jess, even if I was Yeah, because you were half half conscious because of migraine, so you basically just watched with me. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what's interesting is I imagine that as we are saying this, there are a lot of folks who might be in the, you know, the the audience of a lot of video essayists, even though there's a lot of overlap. Like, I loves me a good good video essay. Don't get me wrong. Like, Mm -hmm. they are, when done well, they can really... um, delve super deep into a topic and kind of force you to sort of think or rethink things. But there are also ways that they can be weaponized just like anything else. Mm -hmm. And 
Vosh's name is such a, a third rail for so many people that I imagine that people will hear us speaking non-derogatorily about Vosh and will click off of this segment. Fuck them. Yes. That's my, that's I, my I, statement. I mean, like, Oh, I'm sure. But it, I, I also want to name that that's kind of part of the dynamic that we're talking about. Oh yeah. But yeah. if they, if, but I want to be really clear and I don't know if I can catch them before they click off. But the reality is, is that if you, if you just leave a video because you heard us mention someone in a non-negative way, like let's be super clear. You're a child. Like if you want to leave, cause you don't like the content, that's fine. But if you leave because we're talking about a particular person in a way that you don't like, like, that's fine, but it's still kind of childish in my view. No one else yeah. has to agree with that here. My um, my honest take here is is that like the reason why we're bringing up Mule and let's come back to that is Mule yeah. made a video against Sander Hall that was just filled with lies. It was mm -hmm. yes, someone got on the internet and told lies, and yeah. the problem. There's a video about this on our on your channel. There is. I, we covered this. On. We isn't even. All three of us. Yep. Yeah. Yes, the three of us, the three of us all complained about that then because DJ Mule looked like an idiot. Um, so the problem is, is Mr. Uh, Mr. Mule um, decided to go to Twitter and decided to weaponize. This is this is the real framing here. Weaponize a woman's. Abuse as a means to get a dunk on his previous victim that he did abuse apologia on. Yeah. While doubling down on everything in his video. Oh yeah, he hasn't he hasn't taken anything back. He's doubled down on it. I'm pretty sure the man basically is just an NPC. Are we like it in like Inception or playing like Shell Game? Like like the nesting dolls, right? You keep opening yeah. up and there's another one inside. Keep opening up and there's another one. Inside. Like this feels just like adding more and more layers to the situation. Yeah. Might, and might be time to chill on the Twitters. Yeah, maybe, but it's not going to happen. Probably. Yeah, we're bad at that. I can't. No, yeah, I can't we, stop. We there's a, there's not a, just you, but like the there's the a lot of good stop. pornography there. I'm sorry. So it's it's the doubling yeah. down though, right? Like I got the people they get called out, they double down, and then like it just keeps going. Yeah. Right. I'm at Sage there. I, oh, good. I don't know. Some, yeah, some I, parts are good, but other. Sage is hot. DJ Mule needs to calm on the Twitters and the, the videos. Oh, no. DJ, DJ Mule needs to go. That, that's what I meant. DJ Mule needs to leave whatever his weird vacuum bubble on Mars is and go come back to Earth and touch grass. Like, that's. I've never yeah. seen a man who needs to touch grass so hard. Well, so here's the, the particular bone that I have to pick with Mule. And the thing that got me so furious on the timeline mm -hmm. is. So when when the video first came out, there were a number of people who I saw on Twitter and also in the chats of the live streams I watched of people going through this, like in Merrick's chat, I think in Vosh's chat, in Demon Mama's chat, um, talking about how they were themselves victims and or survivors of abuse and that they were actively re-traumatized by watching that video. And when Mule brought up Amaranth, and so what he did specifically, and, and hopefully the editor, your editor will, will put the tweets so they can see what we're talking mm -hmm. about. Um, he, he basically identified the type of economic abuse that Amaranth was subjected to where her husband basically micromanaged all the finances and tried to draw the comparison to Xander Hall because Xander Hall was technically in control of the money in the in his relationship with Lonnie because he was the primary breadwinner. And basically what he said in so many words, and I don't remember because I had to look at the screenshots because he blocked me, um, was that... Amaranth was an example of real abuse and is kind of a defeater to anybody who claimed that Zan was actually the victim. And he also seemed to take umbrage with the number of people who said that what Mule was doing was not only abuse apologia, but abuse tactics in and of themselves. And I think I even saw a screenshot of him saying that, like, he was not... Um, averse to like seeking legal action 
against people who are quote unquote slandering him. It's not how now, slander works. It's not how slander or libel or you know, depending if it's written or spoken. Now I'm again, I <laughs> talked about my credentials as, you know, a person who's worked with survivors as young as six and as old as sixty-five, who is literally researching abuse assessment. He's got me like, blocked on Twitter. I can't do shit. <laughs> like right now um and whenever i'm like the, you know what these are my credentials i'm not saying this because i'm like some debate bro sycophant but like this rhetoric is dangerous it is dangerous and it is calling it is causing real-time specific harm True. and there are people on the timeline, who are telling you, who are your fans, this is harmful to me. I'm having flashbacks of that time my insert X person here abused me. Last night on Merrick's stream, um, she brought on a male survivor of family abuse, among other things. And he talked about, his, he shared his story in, in pretty excruciating detail, like this this poor this poor guy went through hell as a as a male survivor of of of, uh domestic violence at the hands of his father and his mother um and that he was forced to live with his severely abusive mother because of a situation he was in so he really related to zan on this point Mm -hmm. and people spent time on the timeline trashing him and trashing me and saying things to me like Oh, so you're, oh God, I would just, you know, sort of claiming that I'm irresponsibly using my platform because I'm calling a lie a lie, right? <laughs> um, Oops. You know, and, and I want to use this as a segue to talk a little bit about different types of financial abuse. Is that mm-hmm. okay? Um, so let's see, let's see, oh, get Bob I, was, just a second. I was going to give just a little bit of some extra context, I think might be helpful. Yeah, yeah, I know, go for it. Uh, what's the series that we, um, the harm series that we were doing. Uh, offense versus harm. Oh, offense versus harm. This is a really, really good example of that because, yeah. especially the keyword that Sam used in there was specific um, harm. Right, you can point to the specific examples of of what was happening in that situation, right? Yeah. And that's a really key, important point here when we're talking about harm on a large scale. Um, so I wanted to point that out. Um, yeah. And the other thing I think to keep in mind is that I talk about, um, you know, lenses sometimes or what circles, but the internet's a really different place than what we usually think of. A lot of times when we're talking about abuse, it might be like, hey, you're somebody, somebody related to someone else at like church or your mom, something, or maybe, you know, you're in that situation or you know somebody close to you is in that situation. But when we're on the internet, the circles of how we all interconnect and relate change um and so right like for some people twitter might be their outlet okay so you might be an abuse victim who is seeing all of this stuff on twitter all right you might be um you know somebody who's not a victim but is now absorbing all of this and seeing all of this on twitter so we're talking about rhetoric i think it's really important to keep in mind that those circles where we see this rhetoric going on and people talking this way and large scale, a lot of times it's never just, a lot of times it isn't just one. It's, you know, 10, 20, a hundred, a couple thousand, tens of thousands, depending on the case, a hundred thousand, right? Um, and so I think it's important to keep in mind how those circles of interconnection shift. And even yeah. though some of the people we're talking about are the big head, you know, people that might have the parasocial, the largest parasocial um, interaction, um, we are still not necessarily like that far away in that everybody's kind of interconnected when we're dealing with these kinds of situations, right? We mm-hmm. can suddenly like tweet yeah. at people, right? Whether or not they're near us. So I think yeah. some of those contexts are just are just kind of important with um, oh, no. to keep in mind as we talk about some of these things. Sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. So um, Sam, financial abuse. Well, we'll keep that yeah, in mind. Yeah. Financial abuse, go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Here's the thing. There are many, many different types of financial abuse. And the financial abuse that Amaranth 
was subjected to is only kind of one flavor. True. Another really common flavor, and I've seen this in my office countless times, are is when one person forces the other to be the breadwinner and to like have all of the financial power and will refuse to work for any given time. And then also the thing that I had identified in the the last video that we had done on DJ Mule was uh, that Zan noticed uh, lots of money was going missing. Like the amount that he thought he should be earning from his streams just wasn't showing sure. up. Fuck, I just spilled my drink. That's fine. We're just we're just gonna we're just gonna keep it pushing. Anyway, um fun with ADHD and poor deaf perception. All That's right. Fair. Anyway, um the 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 thing that Lonnie said when he was like, Hey, I feel like I should be earning more money was her saying that it was his fault and that he needed to just stream more and more and more and more and more. And that is a way in which Xander Hall's situation is similar to Amaranth's. True. In that mm-hmm. Amaranth was forced to stream more and more and more and more and more to keep the money coming. And he did not know that she was siphoning like $10,000 of his to you know, for gambling for Walter White. Or, yeah. And Jesse, we got you know, cook. the, the, you know, when somebody is in control of the finances, uh, the, the abuse happens when it's micromanaged and they're like counting every single penny of what they're doing. There is absolutely no fucking way that Lonnie could have gotten away with what she did if Zan was micromanaging their finances. Like, True. no way in hell, mm-hmm. right? And so for Mule to say, because he was the one who was the primary breadwinner, he must be the abuser, this is a very dangerous misconception about how financial abuse can manifest. And it also doesn't account for the fact that financial abuse is an umbrella term, oops, sorry, to talk about a wide range of abuse tactics of which what Amaranth experienced was only one kind. Well, and it well, sounds right? like DJ Buell's take was also like that version is a very misogynistic version of. Yeah. It also assumes things. that men can't be victims. Yeah. Well, and additionally, it gets into the thing of like, we, I hate this man, so please do not think I'm, like, in any way holding him up. But it's one thing I do agree with, like, Warren Farrell on is that there is a way in which, like, men have been pushed into these roles a lot where they are sort of forced ever since the industrial age began to give up their bodies and give up their time in the form of work. Yeah. Um, Basically told from the get-go that in order to show love for your family, you have to be away from them, which is... If you stop and think about it and take yourself out of the socialization of that is really fucked. Because what it yeah. essentially does is it sort of creates alienation. And sure, like we all have the image in our head of like the drunken father stumbling in at like eight o'clock and, you know, being terrible to his family. But there's also the possibility of the man never being around and the wife getting to being able to control the finances and use those against. I mean, I've seen this numerous yeah. times where you have the, you know, the the couple that's been together for 15 years since their 20s. They've both changed and evolved. And then the wife engages in financial abuse in the form of essentially doing a whole bunch of growth work, doing therapy, yoga, a whole bunch of other stuff. And then she ends up leaving her husband, who's basically less sat there holding the bag because instead of being able to do any kind of personal work or growth himself, he's working 60 hours a week. Yeah. And she runs off with a yoga instructor. Yeah. And so the, the, you know, so when we talk about Newell's abuse tactic, what he is doing, and again, I know this word gets misused to shit. So please understand that when I say this, I am coming from a place of expertise and I am not using this as a buzzword. I am using this, with all of the weight of of the term. What Mule is engaging in is ironically an abuse tactic called DARVO, which stands for 
Deny, Attack, Reverse, Victim, and Offender. It was originally coined by Jennifer Freyd, um, who is at Oregon State University. I think she's now doing some independent stuff. And um, DARVO is um, a tactic that's usually used by the abuser when they're called out on their shit, but it can also be used by enablers where you deny the, you know, it's, it's, basically what what it says on the tin right Mm -hmm. you deny the thing the thing happened right zan wasn't the victim you attack zan by making a 90 minute video on him and then you reverse the victim and offender reversing xander hall and lonnie and the thing that i find really really dangerous about folks like dj mule and noah samson and uh, Professor Flowers and FD Signifier, who we'll fucking get to. True. Um, a lot of times uh, when they talk about abuse, I-, I see a lot of thought terminating cliches in the place of arguments. And they'll sort of throw that down and be like, aha, if you don't fall into this thing, you are wrong. Leaving zero room for introspection or critical thinking. Um, I had a, a, a really lovely conversation with Merrick that she may or may not turn into a segment um, where, you know, she she was sort of talking about some of these dynamics as well. And she said brilliant things that I completely forgot, but I, I just respect her as a knowledge holder and just an all around cool human. And I am not just saying that because she sang her praises on her, my praises on her stream, although that was so adorable. I'll um, say it because she sings her praises. Also, she's fucking hot. I just, I'm sorry. I will hot. stand. I will stand until the she end of time. She's very hot. Um, I, I am I, very gay. I, I am. I am very bi. Um, so, what do you do when uh, both sides are darvoing? I don't quite understand what that means. Generally, both sides don't. That's not yeah, how that works. It's, it's, very one-sided um and it can be legitimately really hard to tell sometimes to be completely honest but well and real quick i just i have to be really clear with something so the people you named there let's let's go over them real quick we have dj mule yeah. abuse apology uh, uh, apologist and also uh i guess abuser now at least allegedly yeah um we have uh noah sampson known i guess liar and also like wearer of one of the weirdest 70s porn stashes ever we have and he's like the least offensive out of all of them professor flowers yeah, although known, he engaged in the exact same rhetoric the, uh, they, he did, and, and he they, did. The rhetoric they use are all the same like that's the thing is that they sort of accuse the debate audiences of being abusive harmful the, harassing and, and yet like, they never bring receipts um adhering to whatever their favorite debate or streamer says and i'm like dude have you been in vosh's chat <laughs> have you seen stun blocks holy shit 10 times the fucking stream yeah yeah yeah. Th- these people um, ironically do not tolerate any any they do not brook any dissent whatsoever and yet they claim that's what's going on with them and by the way let me finish yeah. professor flowers known genocide enthusiast i'm not letting that one go fuck y'all don't let it go known okay. yeah. genocide enthusiast and then finally <laughs> fd signifier a very intelligent man whose brain turns off the moment the word debate bro is brought up you know that he featured DJ in his latest video, right? I am aware we will get to that. So, yeah, they oh, all we seem will. real, real. All oh, and also he, he said, seems real tight. He also said that uh, people should go check out American Johnson. You know, the guy who's, uh, yeah, Nazis had a point. Yeah, that oh, guy. I, uh, t- we have a video on him, too, where uh, I get angry as a Jewish person and a recovering Russian studies major. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like the, and, and, and to me that feels very culty as well, because like, they're like the, even the terms of phrase are really similar that they will use. And the, the use of the, like, Zen is the victim period full stop. And like mule creates these really, um, uh, I'm not sure why Samson is so bad. I recommend watching Vosh's videos on the debate bro problem i think there are three of them one where he goes over noah's video one where he talks to noah and the other where he sort of does the anatomy of a good video essay which is ironically one of the best 
dissections of how to put a video essay together that I've ever seen. Also, I gotta uh, watch I gotta, this for you then get back to me. Also, yeah, I yeah, seriously, like Dark Dark Slamo and, and Mordecai, I, I gotta really, really clear. If you are not familiar with the context, go fucking find it. Like I'm not trying to be mean, but like like Samson actively engaged in the same stuff as DJ Mule. He just comes off as nicer, but it's the to same type of degree, yeah, to a lesser degree with less serious material. True. Not to mention, and the re- and the thing with Professor Flowers is arguably said that as long as you are the minority, you can do whatever you want to the majority. That was the argument yeah. that she made with no with no restrictions whatsoever. I watched that debate three times. You watch her debate with Vosh. It was very gaslighting. And if you want to go back and just mm-hmm. double check, go watch her debate with Heem because she steps in it twice. Yeah. Um, Please um, check out stuff to be aware of this stuff. Please. I had a thing with uh, East Bay Medic's question. Sure. Um, as far as the Darvoing part, like they said, that's not really a thing when you have both sides doing it. Um, I think the thing to keep in mind is that in those situations, they're probably a lot more complicated and there's a lot more going on and the details kind of have to get teased out. So that's kind of where I would keep in mind with that. Cause I, I, when I hear that, I think of a situation where like you, you've got like, I don't know, two people that split up a while ago and they both claim that the other is toxic and the other one's abusive. Right. They both claim those things. Well, yeah. and, but, but also, but you, you have know. the thing is like, I think of the situation where you have someone who's one person's doing Darvo and the other person's showing off is going off uh, like doing reactive trauma. And so yeah. the person is yeah. reacting to this, having this huge reaction and it looks like they're doing Darvo, but in reality, what's going on yeah. is they're reacting to the other person's behavior. Yeah, I've seen this number of times where you they where someone will trigger those behaviors intentionally only to then weaponize them and claim the other person's abusive. Mm-hmm. You have to be really close fucking attention. Yeah. And a lot of times the person who is the target is going to be the one who may look, quote unquote, more unhinged mm-hmm. because, you know, it's the situation that I talked about in the last segment with um, the the folks who I worked with at the, the LGBT center where one person will just push and needle and prod because, again, emotional violence is um, d- designed to be covert, right? Until one person snaps. And when that person snaps, they are accused of being abusive. Um, I think there is even some research done that when somebody is in an abusive dynamic, like their resting heart rate is way, way higher than it would be under any other circumstance because their limbic system is constantly activated and they're constantly on alert. So oftentimes the one who is the more like, not necessarily angry, but like anxious, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The person who gets um, triggered is the one that's wrong. No, it's 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 literally, it, and it literally is just fallacy of tone policing. That's literally, yeah. I literally have gone off on this. East Bay, East Bay Street Medic, so... This is my take, and I don't know if Sam's going to agree with this, so this this is my take as, like, off the top of my head without having stuff in front of me. Read the question off real quick. Just I was asking in relation to mutually abusive relationships. Any answers fine, though. Oh. I was just curious. So my answer oh. to that is... Go for it. Mutually abusive relationships tend to be abusive in different ways, and then you have to pay attention to what's happening in each of those particular areas of abuse, or... The other problem is, is that often I would say that there are relationships that can get framed under the mutually abusive idea when really what it is, is both people are just sort of toxic, but there's no forming of any kind of power dynamic for abuse to happen. It needs to follow certain things. And the first one being is one person is getting power over the other. Yeah, there is a really, really interesting book that I read for what for my comprehensive exam on um Intimate partner violence in queer relationships. I think Donovan and Barnes. I don't. I, I have to go and find the, the the source. Remind me, and I'll. I can message it. Like, ping me on Discord, and I can. I can send it to you. Yeah, please. Where the authors kind of reevaluate the classification of of mutual violence, and they kind of push back on the idea that it happens because the concept of mutual abuse can actually um, cause a lot of harm, especially in queer intimate violence, partner violence situations, because a lot of times what looks like quote unquote mutual abuse is actually one person pushing the other to the brink of insanity and the other person lashing out because 
they've been so deeply hurt and abused and gaslit, um, which means which makes the the categorization of mutual abuse very dicey and a lot more complicated than it initially appears. No, absolutely. Um, so, that's why I so said that's what I based said on the literature. Yeah, I'm, this is a yes and no. No, I, I agree. I agree. That's that's to back it up. Yeah, and that's the problem is if you're looking at the if you're looking at the abuse wheel, the problem being is is that each of those different spokes has to do with a power dynamic, and this is what mm-hmm. Sam is saying is mm-hmm. that what the research shows the problem with those power dynamics is is that if one person is engaging in financial abuse, it is very unlikely the other person is engaging in financial abuse as well. So you would have yeah. to go spoke by spoke and actually point out where the power dynamics are. And usually in a lot of the situations I've had where people are mutually both explosive, it's usually one person being explosive and the other person reacting from a tr- yeah. place of trauma or something in their background, things like that. So like just this stuff yeah. gets really dicey and hard. And when we're talking about abuse. We're usually talking about just the one person. So it's just, yeah. Try to keep that in mind, everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Emery, um, just a comment in chat in terms of your education. Yeah, I got some of that in my education, too. That is based on some outdated data. Um, unfortunately, a lot of folks who educate about intimate partner violence can be a bit behind the times when it comes to the literature. Um you know, everyone's and, behind and, on the and literature. The literature is constantly moving. The literature, well, and the literature is constantly takes- moving. Retraining um, people takes a lot of fucking money. Literature. Yeah, so, this may not have. So, yeah, the the level of mutual mistreatment. I totally agree with you. Is is you're right, and the people educating you were wrong. Is what I'm just gonna say on that. How am I supposed um, to keep up on the literature when I got client notes? I'm just saying. I'm I just know. saying. Anyway. <laughs> You know, no, don't don't prevent this from looking for a partner. You know, it's even though everybody is. Um, I found three of them susceptible to this. That doesn't mean that we're all doomed. And I think it's still important to like still hope and find places of positivity, even when things seem like they're all going to shit. Otherwise, you know. No, I think, I think so. about the the scene from Sandman. Um, for those of you who've seen it, you know, in the 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 showdown with the devil, and mm-hmm. you know, he talks about hope. You know, hey, uh, and he's like, "What hope is down here?" And he's like, "But you know, how could you have hell if people don't dream or something?" I don't know. It was like the the the, the Neil Gaiman version of a mic drop. It was Sh- it was quite cool. Hey, Shalibity, real quick, just to let you know, you're gonna want to go through these two big segments just because there's a couple times where Sam asked to put some tweets up. Just get a hold of us. I'm gonna make a group thing with all of us anyway. Go ahead, Zion. I got some notes on yes. that for Thank Shalibity. God. Yeah, I've been taking <laughs> so, notes. Um, the thing I was gonna say was that we get asked. It wasn't too long ago where somebody was like, "Well, why do you guys cover drama? You guys do drama stuff." Well, the quote: "Oop, oh, it's not drama. It's dangerous." Speaking of mm-hmm. which, uh, the two. The, the, some of the best videos that I have seen uh, that explain male intimate partner violence are on the channel Swoop. Um, and she covers quote unquote drama Real situations. Real quick, Sam, huh? let, let, Zena, let Zena finish. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, I think there's a time delay, too. That's probably that's, why we're No, that's, I think that's lot. what's happening. I think that's why we're interrupting each other. Which, by the way, y'all motherfuckers that were bitching about us interrupting each other, that's not what we're experiencing. Yeah. That's there true. were so many comments that were like, I couldn't handle the interruptions. Go fuck yourself. Like, <laughs> First of all, all three of us have ADHD. And then yeah, also, we, we have no way. way to actually gauge when the pauses in people's conversations are. Because I know yeah, what being like, ignored feels like, and it's not this. This is like, no, no this is the Sam conversation I, needs don't exist right now because the internet. Sam and I love dramatic pauses and it fucks everyone up. Anyway, Zena, go. That's true. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Don't get dormer pilled and hope pilled, right? Talk about drama because we can learn from it. That's how we get this information out to people. We don't really have like a school education system, but here we are talking about this so that way. Hopefully people not only have a technical knowledge, but also this stuff floats around in the back of your head as kind of like, hey, when I'm, you know, doing things, maybe you watch out for these dynamics. If you're finding yourself like, acting from an area where like you are scared and you are trying to control something maybe check in with yourself or if you're like hey you know what i don't feel quite comfortable in this particular situation check in with yourself right 
And having the stuff in the back of your head can be really, really helpful to know which situations to start looking out for and which ones, you know, are going to be healthier. Okay? Yeah. And a lot of it is, look at the situation. Don't forget to think about how the situation gets resolved. That's a big part of things. Okay? And, like, this is knowledge and data that I actively use in my dating life. Like, I do pay attention to when I have a concern, when some kind of fight comes up, how does my partner handle it? What happens with my partner? You know, or when they bring it up, how do I react? Yeah, Those are just things that I keep in the back of my I, head. I was going to say, yeah, often some, poorly, I was referring to myself. By the way, Silent, welcome to chat. Missed you. Yeah. Um, also, one of the, the, the best pieces of wisdom that I've heard is say no early and often. A lot of times we want to be super agreeable in a relationship to like, you know, keep a person, but how a person responds to no is incredibly diagnostic because if somebody makes a big deal over no over something little, imagine what's going to happen over something big and sort of setting those boundaries right out of the gate. And if you see somebody pushing those boundaries or ignoring those boundaries, that's a huge red flag to pay attention to. Except, and I'm going to push back on this just to say this as a caveat. If they are dealing with attachment disorders or borderline, you need to pick and choose your battles because you're still cool to make the boundary. You're still cool to have them lose their shit. But not all react reactions are based on the person trying to actively do abuse or, or in some way get past the boundary. It's because they're having a reaction to something going off in their head. I've known many people with borderline members in a couple who thought that that was what was going on. And once you work out the actual meaning, the situation resolves itself. So we want to be careful. Always make the boundary regardless. But also just be aware. If you're getting into a relationship with someone you know, who has borderline, mm -hmm. be aware that it is, it is not our intention to break boundaries. It is that we sometimes just don't always see them because we have a hard time making them for ourselves. That still means make them. Well, and I, yeah. this is why I say pay attention to it. And I'm not making a judgment call because certainly somebody who is neurodiverse or more blues. neurodiverse, right? ADHD, autistic, may have Ooh. a different interpretation than somebody who's neurotypical. Yeah. Jess and I have gotten into that where Jess just forgets like half a thing that we talked about. Was that Ooh. like a boundary breach? No, it wasn't. It was just Jess's ADHD kicked in. And generally, at least for us, I just asked Jess the thing again and go, hey, can you still help me with this? And Jess goes, yeah, okay. Hell, I had a situation cool. recently we just talked about on stream where someone weaponized my my uh, ADHD, against, uh, ADHD and BPD against me. Yeah. Literally told me I broke a boundary I didn't know I could break. I feel like those situations, and, and I don't quite have the words to describe it, but they feel fundamentally different no they do they about. do they do yeah. absolutely uh, i just want to make sure that the people who don't know that difference aren't confusing them well and the thing no. that i get yeah. into that i was noting earlier too was that this is where i see people use the same severe language they talk about severe abuse with to describe absolutely. these situations and it makes it really confusing for other people to go wait am i in a dangerous situation then yeah right are my friends in a dangerous situation it makes it really confusing when the wrong language gets used for what's also, happening again if everything's abuse nothing is but go ahead sam yeah and then so getting back to dj yeah. mule uh for him that's to like topic. not only um sort of double and triple down on his video, but then to ignore or lash out at or block people who are like, hey, this video triggered the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. And then go on to say that it's the debate streamers and these people who are so toxic and need to do the work. <laughs> it's, he's... <laughs> That's, mm -hmm. I think, where the accusations of Mule engaging in abusive behavior himself, not just abuse apologia, are valid because he's priming his audience and his viewers and his Twitter followers to ignore these warning signs and to, mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he's kind of encouraging people to normalize this kind of harm because it happened to somebody that they don't like. Mr. And Mule, so Mr. Mule, are the debate streamers in the room with us right now? <laughs> yes. And getting back to 
Oh, fuck. I lost my train of thought. Sorry. I, I was holding on to that for a minute. I apologize. I, I know. ADHD <laughs> strikes again. God damn it. Um, um, da, 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 what was I talking about? talking about you engaging in abusive behavior basically gaslighting his audience um people yeah. were like stop it he was like nah um yeah. teaching his audience and priming them yeah so he's you know priming his audience but then also he's very very good at weaponizing the language of leftism and mm-hmm. he's very good yes. at making himself out to be an expert on things that he is not. When, when, when not only is he not, but the advice that he's giving is causing harm. And when people are like, hey, you're harming me, that even that isn't giving him pause. Ah, it's the the thought the, the thought terminating cliches, because he set up the thought terminating cliche of if you are in the camp that thinks that, be, uh, that Xander Hall is the victim, you are bad, actually. Like, you are ontologically bad. And any per- and he's created this perfect double bind. Because if you push back and give valid criticism, well, then you're just one of these debate nerds who are proving his point about how belligerent everybody is. And he's setting up this really perfect, like, Kafka trap. Uh, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't yeah and so his audience is also primed to repeat that type of dynamic which is also what we saw with fd fucking signifier i keep wanting to like this guy's content no 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 no, 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 let's let's let's, real quick before we move on to him before we move on to him i have to say this because it's very important to me it's a good thing Lily now identifies as bisexual because I have a partner recommendation. Yeah. Seriously. Oh. Just I'm just saying, it. everything that everything that Sam just said, who does that sound like? Weaponizing progressive language as a means to essentially engage, engage in abuse and authoritarian behavior. Huh. Yeah. I fucking wonder. God, we gotta get yeah. those videos out. No, we do. We do. And this is why yeah. I keep going, look for this, the specific. I know I haven't trolled my SPs, okay? I'm deal with it everyone i've had that issue since i was a kid um for specific examples of things happening not that like we have to have a hard-based evidence because a lot of times we don't have a video for things but look for the exact examples of what is actually happening hey what did the person actually say hey what was their actual reaction right not to say that you can't still be lied to in those situations but asking those very specific questions are going to get you much closer to what was probably going on in that situation. True. And if yeah. they refuse to answer, well, that might tell you a lot. So, so again, yeah. DJ Mule Sin trying to weaponize a woman's abuse in mm-hmm. order to continue his hate boner against a streamer that he decided to randomly try to white knight against for a woman who basically engaged in financial abuse. Next yeah. person. Let's talk about FD Signifier. <laughs> FD Signifier yep. recently engaged in a video where he had DJ Mule on. He also uh, told people to go check out American Johnson. We'll go back to that. And uh, FD on Twitter decided to do a huge, like, apologia tour about uh, about DJ Mule, who did a bus- abuse apologia, which I think at that point, if we have one more person apologize for FD, we get a free coffee or it's Inception. I don't know which. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and yeah. uh, DJ Mule seems to be in real tight with people that like he podcasts with like there seems to be a whole group that he's really in tight with yeah they keep showing up yeah that might also need to be uh some tweets that uh your your fearless and gator wonderful at ed- uh, editor might might need to to clip in here editor gator we but love you <laughs> yes but it's um, even worse than that. So I, I I tried to watch snippets of the the FD Signifiers video, at least the ones that had DJ Mule in it, because he basically DJ Mule has it's about why right wingers are bad at sex, and DJ Mule is not only featured in it. This is not a contrapoints Buck Angel thing. I, uh, where, you know, he just like read a line or two and wasn't, you know, 
platformed as an expert. DJ Mule was actively platformed as an expert on this oh. topic mm-hmm. and used, you know, really good sounding leftist rhetoric. But the rhetoric was pretty similar to the rhetoric that was u- the, to the rhetoric that was used in the hippies video on Xander Hall, which means that you know I think somebody talked about like this this sort of you know t- tweeted to FD Signifier like this really hits at your credibility and he said something like fuck your credibility or whatever. I'm gonna take um, my ball and go home. You should also just yeah. not watch my content. Basically, if you if you like debate streamers, don't don't watch me. And I I even tweeted at him and I said like, hey, I I've worked with trauma survivors myself, and the the the, the video has harmful information in it. It's it's I can't tell you how dangerous it is. And I even said like, I'm happy to talk to you, elder millennial to elder millennial, because you know we're mm-hmm. all the same age. He sort of. I, I listened to his discussion with uh, Shark 300, and he had mentioned being like 40. Another thing that was really weird, actually, um, ADHD Wait, I'm tangent. Um, I know, so am I. Fancy. Um, that he talked about in the shark thing is he's like, Thanks yeah, enough. I. Um, I. Um, I he's like, I, you know, I, you know, frequented a lot of these chuddy websites, and he said, like, He said something like, you know, I was on 4chan and 8chan and Stormfront and I had like a record scratch moment. I'm like, wait, I'm sorry. What? No, Shark is in his 20s. Um, No, Shark's uh, a baby. Yeah, Shark's, Shark's, Shark's Shark's a a, Shark's a a cute, a cute, a cute baby. Leave, leave Shark alone. He's he's a smart baby, but he's very smart. Shark is, Shark is, Shark is baby. Also, Shark is the living incarnation of um, the, the Ikea shark. Shark is yeah. young, not Shark is not the one who is old. Yeah. Yes. Um no. No, FD is shark FD is 40, man. Small. I feel really weird about yeah. that now. Damn. Um, but like he said, like Stormfront, I'm like, I'm sorry, what? Like that's not a chitty website. That's a white supremacist website. There is literally no good reason to be on that website ever under any circumstances or 8chan because you know? that was just a place to, 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 to again was basically just alt-right hangout along with a place to share child pornography so you know and so when he says like i wonder how many of these debate streamers are like former white supremacists part of me is like did you see them there like what do you t- <laughs> okay but um, you were on and- stormfront yeah, or something like I need to go back and, and check that specific VOD. It was like one of the it was like chuddy website, chuddy website. The only reason why you're on this site is Nazis. I might have been Stormfront. It might have been something else. I, I It's been a while, but I remember that like record statue moment. I was like, what the f- what? Anyway, um, but getting back to it. Um, also, one of the things that Merrick talked about on her stream yesterday is that she actually reached out to DJ, uh, to FD Signifier and was basically like, you know, can I please talk to you about this? This, you know, you're promoting somebody who promotes really harmful rhetoric. You know, if my ex-husband, who is her abuser, I assume that if she says it on a live stream that it's public information, because otherwise, why the fuck would you say it on a live stream? Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. You know, she she said something to the effect of like, if my abuser, God forbid, got on Twitter and started saying all of this awful shit about me, I am now scared that I won't be believed. I am now scared that someone like DJ Mule is going to make a video about me. Like, you know, like this is this is really fucking serious. This is really bad. And apparently he left her on red. Like he saw the things because it clicked scene and he never responded to her and he never responded to me. Um, and yeah. Oh, he um, argued with white supremacists on Stormfront. I don't know why you'd still go on Stormfront, but that that's a little, that's better. I'd ha- yeah, we'd have to see the, I'd have to see the clip. I, I, yeah. Yeah, it was still very, very weird. Um, but the, the thing that just really pissed me off is when he said, like, a lot of these former debate streamers are ex-white supremacists who haven't grappled with the harm that they've caused. I'm like, motherfucker, we're seeing tangible harm happening in real time to abuse survivors who are saying, this is harming me. 
I am triggered by this. I am getting flashbacks to what my abusive ex did to me because of how DJ Newell handled this. And now I am afraid that he is going to minimize me and what I went through. And you're trying to like wave your hand at some theoretical harm that may or may not have happened for an audience that may or may not actually be ex-white supremacists. And I said to him, like, I, I, I linked a, a tweet and said, like, hey, people are being harmed by this, like, now. And I even replied, and I was like, I have never been a white supremacist. I am the granddaughter of Holocaust survivors and communist labor organizers, and I am actively nice. engaged in anti-oppression work. And I am learning all about Black femi feminism and decolonizing methodologies, although there's only so much you can decolonize when you're in a PhD program, which is kind of the product of white supremacist structures. And when you're in social work, you have to, it's, it's, it's very complicated. Um, you know, it's, and this is also why I said in the last segment, it is really, really important that if somebody who is quote unquote on our team engages in abuse, we can't let that shit slide just mm -hmm. because they do good activism. True. If Bosch did what he did to Poppy again now, knowing what he knows now, I would drop him like a hot fucking rock. And I believe me, I would come down like with the fire of fucking hell. Right. Um, you know, Agreed. If 100%. Hall, you know, I, and, and I know that people will say this and then have that not happen, but no, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a recovering Joss Whedon stan, you know, mm -hmm. I had to denounce him even though he was like, the cornerstone of my childhood and i i am perfectly fine leaving him on the trap like so, you know leaving him on the trash heap you know so so to kind of come back to this like so with fd signifier here's here's my problem is that fd signifier has these blind spots this is my take yeah. with fd is that fd signifier has actually told people to come to our channel before like he clearly tries but the issue yes. i get from him is is that the that the problem is is that he either due to association or just being a boomer or whatever his issue. And I mean, boomer in spirit, because he's the same age as me. And I, whatever yeah. the reality is, is that like, I get the sense that him is him as a, a content creator has these blind spots. Cause if you watch his buck breaking video, you watch like yeah. some of his stuff, it's really solid. But when it comes to certain things like defending Kanye or oh. like actively defending DJ mule or, like just some of this stuff is really, really, really bothersome because the problem is, is that his reactions to it, it conflicts with the way his videos are presented. His videos are presented oh. as him being very, very like, yeah, very, very so, mature and engaging. And on Twitter, he basically di 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 like disintegrated to a 20 year old. Yeah. Also, it turns out that he did actually respond uh, uh, with Otro said. Merrick pinned a comment on her stream nine hours ago. Good news. FD responded to me this morning. It was lukewarm, but kind. So I see this as a bridge building opportunity. God fucking bless Merrick. Um, she's like, especially given all of the shit that she has gone through for her to like, still try to see the good in everyone. No, did, right? did, did Merrick, Merrick, De, Merrick DeVille is a sweetheart and should be hugged for every bad thing anyone's ever done. Seriously. Yeah. Also, yes, just Whedon fans shaking hands with recovering Harry Potter fans. The struggle is very real. And so, yeah, it, it is this kind of duality because there is good work that FD Signifier does on this stream, but like what he did in those Twitter feeds because of his bizarre Whatever. bias is is it's so harmful and to to and and i get that nobody likes hearing that they've caused harm and i have no idea how i would react to hundreds of people telling me that i caused that harm i'd like to think that i take ownership but like i don't fucking know i might double down but hey, like, you know what I'm this bitch. It still causes harm. I'm 100% that bitch. I'll say this. No one else, everyone else is like, I love essays. I don't know why the essays are so mean to us. I'll be like, fuck essays. 
you basically go through and re- like review and fucking reshoot everything. So you come out looking sparkling. Sean makes great videos. FD's made a couple bangers. And then you guys get on Twitter and act like asses. Yeah, that's true. I'm out here with Xena and Sam live. If I yeah. fuck up, if I mess up, all these motherfuckers out here. Yeah, I can't pull that back. So yeah. the idea, like this idea that like, I think SAS- you've corrected me live uh, a couple of times. I don't remember specifically, but there have definitely been times when you said something. I'm like, oh shit, you're right. Okay, never mind. We, yeah, I we have to we have to catch ourselves. Yeah, we have to catch ourselves because the problem is, at what point is it editing for artistic purposes? Purposes, and what point is it scared? At Ez said, is it editing for propaganda? Like this yeah. is this is my problem. Is is that like. You can create a video that gives a particular perspective on a creator. Like, I'll give a really good example of this. And I still love her, even though I haven't seen the new video. I still stand Contra. She's the, one of the reasons I transitioned. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. let me be really clear. Contra in videos is immaculate. Contra in a live discussion stumbles on her feet. She yeah. does not know what she's doing. Like, I'm not saying that is a bad thing, but again, it is a different thing. We we get out here every, like, Sunday and sometimes other times and are literally, like, doing this live. This is, like, we have 124 viewers right now, which is great for us. That's wonderful. That's Thank you for being here. Yeah, Thank please. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, please, like the video. We really appreciate it. Thank you for being here. I hope you subscribe. Try donating. Go to the website, transgirltherapist.org. Here's the point. The point being is, is that, like, someone, like... Zan or Vosh or any of these other big streamers who ba- who who basically get this stuff. Imagine being in front of ten thousand people and having to keep your cool. Yeah, and not and 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 the expectation is out there that you can't make a mistake ever. Yeah, while live. And again, I always think it comes down to the standard we're holding. Essayists can edit things and never ever show a mistake, never even show a weakness. But we get out here, and I have to be like like. I literally got on stream, talked about a cartoon character from a webtoon that I liked, and because she was good trans representation, bald like a child. Yeah. I don't get, like, I don't get to do, like, a cute essay where I show pictures and do all this. No, I get to get out there and be real with shit. I'm not saying that, like, every streamer does that or everyone's being super authentic, but I'm kind of tired of this and I kind of feel like pushing back because as much as I love my essays, and trust me, I Mm -hmm. do... I haven't been watching you all for a while. I got other shit to do now. Yeah. Like, I, I try to listen to exploring series. SCP shit is way more interesting at this point. I'm sorry. Like, I need a minute. Yeah. Goddamn. Uh, so, I, I... I'm glad to hear that that FD responded to Merrick. I... Sad that it's lukewarm, but at least it's something. I, I, I hope I get... I hope he proves me wrong. Um, I, I hope he's able to walk some stuff back. I really want him to prove me wrong. Um, I do not have such hope or charity for DJ because I feel like, I feel like the, the outrage was almost the point because he, he went in like basically with a giant red flag being like here bull that is the debate bro audience. (laughs) I pull this away. Why are you attacking me? I don't get it. Why are you charging? Here's a pull it away. What, what, why, why did you charge that red flag? What's wrong with you? Like, I, it, I'm it serious. Like, like that. You know, yeah, it's it's very much the energy of, all right, so they brought the velociraptors into Jurassic Park. We just lost a guy last night. I guess it's time to smather myself in barbecue sauce and walk into the cage. Nothing bad will happen. Yeah. It had that but energy. Then, yeah, and, and so a lot of folks who sort of make these critique videos, what I really wish that they would do, and it's funny because people will, will do more work looking into fucking right-wingers than they will to, like, leftist streamers. They just sort of take people's words for it. Whereas I've seen people do deep dives on Alex Jones and Ben Shapiro, and they play more segments of their shit than they do when they make essays about Vosh or Zan or whoever else they feel like making videos about. And I'm like, if you are going to make any kind of comment or try to reach these audiences, 
you need to know your shit. There's just, there's no getting mm-hmm. around that. And they'll often play the, like with Vosh in particular, I know we're getting, you know, I know that Vosh and Zan are not the same person and they make very different content and blah, blah, blah. But they often get lumped together by the folks that we're talking about. Um, there was one video, I think by Solari, where he showed the clip of Vosh saying that he had never seen a good argument um, against like child pornography and then being like, there's no defending this. And I was sort of thinking of like, this is the equivalent of somebody making a video essay about the tale of two cities. You know, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was a time of joy. It was a time of sorrow to be like, what the hell is wrong with Charles Dickens? He is writing about the reign of terror and he called it the best of times. (laughs) He said it was the time of joy. There is no way that you can defend this. And then wonder why people correct them. And when they correct them of like, no, literally the next sentence, he said, best of times, worst of, he's drawing a comparison and to be like, oh, well, there go the Dickens stands again, trying to stand their favorite author, you know? Yeah, well, again, and it just makes them come off as anti-intellectual, like, especially when they don't use actual clips, like, like, let's be clear. I know it's a pain in the ass to go through the thousands of hours Vosh is streamed. It's not. But, but, you but can guess what? The best of clips. There's a whole bunch there. And what you guys do is find one clip, clip it out of context for 15 seconds, and hope for the best because your stupid ass audience somehow believes that 15 second clip. Also, yeah. um, real quick in chat, just to let everybody know, uh, everybody's watching. We're talking about the Amaranth situation. We just in our previous segment discussed uh, Amaranth and regards to the abuse that she went, she, she's been dealing with with her husband. We are now in our second segment where we are discussing some of the reactions by various um, lib or leftist uh, people on YouTube that were bad. Uh, we talked about DJ Mule earlier, who tried to weaponize that stuff against his previous victim, Zan. We're now talking about FD Signifier, who is current, who, who decided to defend DJ Mule for reasons. Um, reasons. Yeah, it's only reasons. Um, it's just vibes. Um, <laughs> um, do you have anything you want to add about FD or how you feeling? No, I'm a little, I'm actually really warm. I think your bedroom got like... I'll turn the air on. Computers. Yeah. No, Sam, I have a hard Sam time playing to like. I have a hard time paying attention to Twitter, so like I see bits and pieces of all of these things. Yeah, uh, well, but I I've also feel procrastinating very on my dissertation, and that's one of the ways that I procrastinate. It's really bad. I shouldn't do it, but I take after my communist labor organizer grandmother in that I don't know when to keep my fucking mouth shut. No, that that's fair. Hey, I value your input. Um, it was cool seeing your comments um, on thank Twitter. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I do want to talk about somebody, like I said, who I kind of consider the gold standard in terms of like sourcing and like responsible video essay. Yeah, yeah. Let's give a good example. Um, she is Swoop, and I've talked about her a couple of times. She's the you're, it's not d- d- drama, it's dangerous person. Mm, okay. And I'm going. To, to put a link in chat to her video about the Sienna May Gomez situation, which is a video about um, a male abuse survivor. And, and when it comes to like, not everyone may like her particular style or sense of humor, but she comes at it from a survivor's perspective. And the way that she sources and structures her video essays, which she calls docs, are impeccable. Yeah. And one of the things that she will do is every time she makes a claim about something that someone said or did, it is immediately followed by a clip. Mm, And she will use multiple clips from the same source so that you get the entire context. And every time she introduces a topic... It is followed by like an expert source or resource that she, you know, got it. So the thing that we uh, teach people to do in their academic writing in college. Yeah. Yeah. Like she'd get an A plus in an academic essay. Right. I really wish that like lefty debate bros could learn from her and like her, like her tagline is it's not drama. It's dangerous. So she talks about YouTube celebrities. She talked about like, um, Shane Dawson, Celebrity Apologies, mm-hmm. um, Gabby Hanna, 
who we talked about, I think the first or okay. like the second time I came on stream. That's good. Um, so like, but she does a brilliant job at like taking the like stuff that's in the like pop culture air and like doing some serious education about the dynamics of abuse and racism and et cetera mm -hmm. and consent. Mm -hmm. um, like check out her channel, not just that whole, that video, but I wanted to share that video because it was specifically a breakdown of a situation where the guy was unambiguously the victim. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I know. Imagine citing sources. What a shock! I know C citing sources. We're talking about a good example. Yeah, so. yeah. Um. So that's that's FD. Pretty disappointing. Um. Yes. And we talked about accountability on this stream. So again, accountability does not be a mob on Twitter and be shitty. I would really prefer people yeah. that harass these people. We are talking about in regards to their behavior. Please don't be that person. Um. If you are yeah. that person, and I find out, I I will find you and lick you. Um, yeah. in a not fun way. Um, Our server no. has rules against harassment. We are against, yeah, we are against any kind of harassment or targeting. Um, but the last person I wanted to bring up tonight is uh, Keemstar, someone I've never spoken oh. about on here. Neither is Zena. Oh. Yeah, Keemstar okay. is a drama streamer. God, that name just makes me tired. Yeah, we're gonna be really oh, quick no. with him because it is tiring. Keem He's apparently so decided to turn Amaranth's uh, abuse into a thing, basically pointing out how all of her incel followers, I think it was, or something, are all of have a right to be mad did. because she hid the she hid her husband. Of course he did, because you count on Keemstar to give the worst takes possible on everything ever. That's like destiny to your bad. Oh, he 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 was like destiny before destiny got bad. Oh, he, like his just God. entire no no. Keem he, he, he is renowned for bad takes. I so mean, I am I am not far off then. Oh jeez, Scout, leave it to DJ Mule to make me appreciate APA MLA citation. God mood. damn him! A whole ass mood. Got a whole fucking mood. Um. Yeah, oh yeah, Keemstar, Keemstar literally is, is whole is a, a just. Speaking of gnome pills, he's the other shitty ass gnome on Twitter. By the way, YouTube. Keem literally said depression isn't real. And then Scared Easy's like, it's physically impossible for Keem to ha say something good. Actually, no, he did, he actually came out against homophobia in a recent tweet. People were like, did he hit his head? Is he okay? <laughs> like, minimum accomplished. He did call out um, Romeo, the, the, the tattoo guy for perving on children stop clocks etc etc he he will he, he he has just like a slew of garbage harassing takes and then just throw one good take out just to confuse people um i still haven't forgiven him for like the way he like harassed and hounded jesse smiles after <laughs> she was raped and the rapist was convicted and then was abused by Gabby Hanna. To be clear, I'm not laughing at that. I was laughing at chat. Just, I yes. don't want anyone to come back and clip me out of context. I was laughing at my girlfriend saying, Keemstar and having a worse opinion, having the worst opinion, name a better duo. No. I'll wait. Yeah, <laughs> That's, seriously. God holy damn. shit. Um, so I I am unpleasantly unsurprised that oh, Gabby came Hanna, out that... with the chuddiest take. Gabby Hanna, that is not a name I have heard in many, many years. <laughs> and by that, yeah. I mean several months ago when you when I think you came on here and complained about uh, Jimmy Snow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that God. Might have been about that a year ago. Like a ago. Oh, that, that was like a year ago. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. like 18 dramas ago. <laughs> that is like 18 like, dramas. It's amazing. Yeah. We still have memory of it. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I feel like I should have blocked that out. Um, simpler times, simpler times. Wow. Back when the bad guys were so clear to see. Uh, I uh, know. We were anyway. like babes in the woods. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, does anyone else have anything they want to add on this? Keem is terrible. Uh, FD signifier is disappointing. DJ Mule continues to be the most abusive prick. Um, and let's hope that Amaranth has safety and people to support her. Yeah, Absolutely. let's let's all send well wishes. If she starts any kind of way to help her, you know, check it out if you're able to support. Mm -hmm. I would oh, love. Thank you, Hila. 
That's so sweet. Hella, Hella is that. That's pretty impressive. Uh, that's pretty impressive coming from Hella because Hella's negative on everything. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I, I, I thank you. That's like Hella's one good take. <laughs> you get one. Hella also still knows me another like seven k. <laughs> we've recently got to know Hella more, and so there's some banter back and forth here. I, I, I judge not. Um, Don't offer me nine k and then pull back on it. It's just, <laughs> anyway, so if no one else, if anyone said anything else, I don't really have anything on these people. I just wanted to bring up Mule again because I think he's utterly just. If you actually support Mule or you think that Mule is defensible, I I need you. I'm going to be really clear on my boundaries. Like you can have that view, and I'm not going to like boot you. But like, also, this is me giving you the mom eye of. Really what are you doing? Yeah. Are you, are you mom making and Ren are just kind of like looking at you, going. Are you making good life choices? Are you sure? Are you sure you I want? You sure you want to be dating him? Full power of the latent Jewish mother guilt trips of all of the guilt tripping. Oh damn! It is in my blood. And it's like summoning the Sanderson sisters, but instead of a virgin and a black candle, I think you need like what is it like? Some potato pancakes and applesauce. Needs to make a union for you. Oh. When my dissertation is done, maybe. Also, to be clear, again, you guys should all occasionally like poke beyond safe words to make little sixty minute shorts that we can put on the channel. Yes, because then we can give them to uh, Sundrop and bake some cute shit. Um, right, yeah, right. We've got one on the way. We've got one on the way. Yeah. But so, um, I did tell before, yes, please poke me because if you don't poke me, I won't do it because. ADHD brain gonna ADHD brain. Hey, I wanted to ask you something, Sam. Would you be willing to do like some workshops on the sh- on the s- on the um, server? Short sure. ones, stuff on stuff on your stuff. I, the reason I'm asking, and then th- this is not to put you on the spot. It's this is like you already have all this stuff lying around. I would love like a like either on stream or like off stream mm-hmm. a discussion about like the different consent models we talked about. Yeah, for, we, um, oh, yeah, I can to totally go into that do more. that. Um, oh, consent second, and uh, consent oh, in the easy, risk easy. models, uh, like the oh, ones yeah. like rack, uh, safe saying consensual, safe saying consensual, prick, and the four C model are yeah. the four that I know. Uh, we yeah, are going to do easy, a video easy. soon with Fry's, the one from Planned Parenthood, which is just consent in general. It's not like kink focused, but trying to outline yeah. some more situations I that people have a hard time on understanding. It really, from yeah. one of my classes that nice. I taught on BD. Yeah. So, so I, yeah, that, if people would like that, let us know because I think that would be a really cool segment. Um, and again, it gives us an excuse to have Sam on more. Um, mm-hmm. Not that yeah. we need one. We literally, the moment like stuff like this happens, we poke Sam. We're like, hey, hey Sam, Sam come Sam's here. Signal. Right? It's right? just a shiny object. It's not even a bat signal. <laughs> it's just, it, it literally is some tinfoil. It's just keys being dangled, you know. That or, or just emoji hearts. Like, just, <laughs> hey, Sam, yeah. I need you. Come here. Come straight like, with what? us tonight. <laughs> So, yeah, yep, that's okay. I'm also attracted to the uh, shiny emotes too. Yeah, so, let's yeah. have Sam. This is great. So, real quick, yeah, real um, quick, I want to interrupt to just say, by the way, if you are enjoying this, if this has been mm-hmm. your jam, please subscribe, please like. We really appreciate it. We're a small channel. We've only passed 5,000 recently. We had a really slow period for two months. It's finally taking back off. We really appreciate any donations, any mm-hmm. support. You can go to our website, transgrowtherapist.org. You can donate to uh, GoFundMe. We have up on the uh, in the uh, in the website. Um, anything you guys can do to help and join in and be part of the conversation, we really appreciate. We try to be as thorough and nuanced as humanly possible here. Mm-hmm. We try to be as caring and compassionate as well po- as, as as we can be here. As much as we like kvetch and like you know go hard on some of this stuff, we genuinely do care. We try to take these drama situations. And find the lessons for them out of this. Like, again, this Amaranth situation is not just a, wow, that sucks to be her. It's one, that's horrific. She went through that. But also, this could literally happen to anyone. And for seeing people people who are nominally on the left say things that they have been saying, such as weaponizing her being a sex worker against her or things like that, this is not okay. Mm -hmm. So if you like this stuff, feel free to donate. Feel free to subscribe. Like the video. We really appreciate it. Okay. Go yes. ahead, Sam. And uh, uh, for the YouTube chat, the video essayist was Swoop. Um, I don't know if anyone can put that link in the Twitter chat. 
Yeah, I don't know if we have a, a full mod on right now. So uh, if Sage or someone else wants to grab it, that would be really appreciative. Yeah, I got it in yeah. my notes too. So we'll try and get some of this down from final copy Sounds of the video. Good. Anyway, so. I'm going to go and collapse because I've had a very long day today. Excellent. So here's what I'm going to say is that if you, again, like this, we really appreciate everyone being here. And mm -hmm. um, again, we wish the best to Amaranth and hope that she can get out of that situation. And um, I really appreciate seeing people like Vosh, Merrick. Uh, I assume mm -hmm. Demon Mama did a segment on it, so I'm going to thank her too. And anyone else that's coming out in, in defense of Amaranth and pushing back on this these, these really toxic narratives, I don't care what our previous baggage is. I just appreciate you doing it. I think it's a good look. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Jess and I both share that. And we really <laughs> appreciate you coming on too, Sam, to talk about this. It's always a pleasure. Um, I am occasionally on, the uh, on, on Discord. Um, the best way to get a hold of me on Discord is to at me, because um, when you at me, it pops up as a notification, because when I get overwhelmed, um, I find like live chatting to get overwhelming, and so mm -hmm. I like hide. But if there's a question, um, just like at me, and I will, I, will, I, I will appear like Beetlejuice, except without... Less dead. Less dead. And less pervy. The whole being dead thing. With the teal name on the server. Yeah. So. The musical is better than the movie, and I will die on that hill. I will fight you. I haven't seen either yes, of these. Yes, the one with the light blue hair. That's her. I oh, mean, I, I just call saw her, something uh, on track. Again. Uh, on, oh, okay. <laughs> no, Everyone's got name. colored hair and pronouns here. It's okay. Oh, Swoop has light blue hair. Okay. We yeah. have tealish, light bluish names on our server for VIPs and, and our content creators. So color coordinated. Anyway. Anyway, so with that, puppy the, in the back. Look, we got a perfect bun face. Perfect to end this this segment with. All right, yes. folks. We will see you in the next one. Thank you so much if you're new to the channel, and uh, yeah, please come back. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Take and care. Uh, let's cut the segment here. See you, Sam. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, consider donating to us. You can support us on our website, transgirltherapist.org. You can also help us on our Patreon, link below, or you can become a member here on YouTube. Um, thank you so much for watching.